Today we are going to present Irving's algorithm, which solves the stable roommates problem if there is a solution. The problem is the task of trying to match up a set of people into pairs where each person has an ordered list of preferences of the people they'd like to be roommates with. First we will present an example of the algorithm working on a sample problem, then we will move on to an example where the algorithm fails and no solution exists. The algorithm works in three separate phases. The first phase uses a previously developed algorithm that solves a similar problem called the stable marriage problem. We first use this to start matching roommates, then once we have a set of proposals, we reject pairings that are less favourable than our current proposals. Finally, the algorithm reconciles the remaining choices yielding stable matchings if at all possible. Here we present an example from the TV series How I Met Your Mother. This is the preference table. Down the first column we have the names of the characters, and to the right their respective list of preferences. Here we can see that Marshall's first preference is Lily, followed by Barney, Robin, and finally Ted. In the first phase, we proceed as follows. For every person P who hasn't received a proposal, the first phase works as follows. For every person P who hasn't had a proposal accepted, or all of them rejected, P proposes to the next most favourable person on their preference list that hasn't rejected them previously. If a receiver of a proposal has already accepted a proposal from someone else, she will accept the new proposer P if he is more preferable than the previous proposer, otherwise she will stay with the previous proposer. Here, first Marshall proposes to Lily, and Lily accepts this proposal, as she has not been proposed to before. Ted then proposes to Lily, but because Lily has been proposed to before, she then looks at her preference list. So here we can see that Marshall is more preferable than Ted, so this, this proposal is rejected. Ted moves on to proposing to Marshall. Marshall hasn't been proposed to before, so this proposal is accepted. Lily proposes to Barney. Barney hasn't received a proposal before, so this proposal is accepted. Barney proposes to Ted, and since Ted hasn't received any proposals, he too accepts. Robin proposes to Marshall, but as you can see before, Marshall had already been proposed to by Ted. We look at Marshall's preference list, and we see that Robin is a higher preference than Ted, so Ted's proposal to Marshall is now rejected, and Marshall accepts Robin's proposal instead. Ted then proposes to Robin, and since Robin hasn't received any proposes, proposals, she accepts that. Now we have these two rejected proposals, we alter our preference table by removing the pairs of the people who have been rejected. So here, where Lily has rejected, rejected Ted's proposal, we remove, Ted from Lily, uh, we remove Lily from Ted's preference list and Ted from Lily's preference list. Again, we reject Marshall from Ted's preference list and remove Ted from Marshall's preference list. We now move on to phase two, where we reject each pairing that is not as good as the possible pairings we have already achieved. For example, if we have a proposal where A proposes to B, we look into B's preference list and have a look and see whether any people with a lower preference than A are still in B's preference list. If there are, then we reject them. So this will probably make a bit more sense when we perform it on our example. If we look at uh, the preference list, Lily is currently with Marshall, Barney is currently with Lily, Ted with Barney, Marshall with Robin, and Robin with Ted. So now what we do is we look through each list, and if there are any people to the right of the current accepted proposal, we reject them. So here we can see in Lily's table that Robin uh, is still, still in the table, but Lily's current accepted proposal was from Marshall, so we can reject Robin. So here we reject Robin from Lily's table and Lily from Robin's table. And again, we look down, Lily's the lowest preference on Barney's list, there are no people to reject. And we already rejected Lily from Robin's preference list when we looked at Lily's preference list. So that's the end of stage two. Finally, we move into phase three, where we take each person with more than one person left in their preference list and create two new lists, P and Q. These lists are first defined as follows. So the first element of P is the person that you pick with a preference list of more than one person. So we'll start with Marshall, which I'll shorten to M. And then we generate the rest of the list as follows. So the next element of PI is the last preference of QI. QI is defined as the second preference of PI. So essentially to go down, we take the second preference and to go across, we take the last preference. So the second preference of Marshall is Barney. Barney's last preference is Lily. Lily's second preference is Marshall. 
Marshall's last preference is Robin. Robin's second preference is Barney. Barney's last preference is Lily. And we now terminate the algorithm because we have had two occurrences of an element and we only keep generating this list for as long as we have no cycles. And a cycle is where we see the same person twice. So we now reject pairs of elements along these diagonals. So Barney rejects Lily. And Marshall rejects Robin. Since we still have people left in Marshall's, uh, more than one person left in Marshall's list, we continue again with the process. So Marshall, second preference is Barney. Barney's last preference is Robin. Robin's last second preference is Ted. Ted's last preference is Barney. Barney's second preference is Marshall. Marshall's last preference is Barney. And we now have a cycle because we see that Barney has occurred twice in the list. So we reject all these pairs. So Barney rejects Robin and vice versa. Ted rejects Barney and vice versa. Marshall rejects Barney. So now we have this case where Barney has been rejected by everyone and Marshall is paired with Lily and Ted with Robin. And Barney is left all on its own, as you would expect. Here we show an example of how Irving's algorithm can fail to find a stable matching if one does not exist. We have taken this example from South Park since Cartman is a universally loathed character, which leads to the case where no one wants to be roommates with him. So here's our preference list. Cartman is hated by everyone, but obviously not himself, as he can't be roommates with himself. Stan first proposes to Kenny, and since Kenny has not had a proposal before, he accepts. Kenny proposes to Kyle, and since Kyle has not had a proposal before, he accepts. Kyle then proposes to Stan, and since Stan has not received a proposal, he accepts. Cartman then proposes to Kenny, but Kenny has already received a proposal, and Cartman is the last preference of Kenny's, so this is rejected. Cartman proposes to Stan, his next preference, but Stan has already received a proposal and is Cartman, and is, Cartman is Stan's last preference. Cartman finally proposes to Carl, his least favourite choice, but because Carl has already received a proposal and Cartman is Kyle's least favourite preference, he is again rejected. So since everybody rejects him, there is no stable matching in this example. Now we consider the complexity of the algorithm. In phase one, we have n people. Each person will have n minus one preferences. If people get matched with the last preference in the worst case, then each person will have to propose n minus one times. So the complexity of this phase is quadratic. In phase two, in the worst case, people will have to reject n minus one preferences. However, each time a pre each time a person is rejected, uh, they will also be removed from another preference list. So we end up with this sum here, and the uh, Complexity again is quadratic. In phase three, we have at most n cycles, which will be at most n people long. Again, this will be quadratic complexity. Stability is a property of a set of matching. So here, take, take for example, a match between person A and C and person B and D. So these two people are paired and these two people are paired. If A prefers B to C, a more stable matching would be where A was with B, providing B preferred A to his current match. In this case, he does. So A and B will be a more stable match than A and C and B and D. If we have any pairs like this in our result, then that set of matchings is non-stable.